Loki Season 2 is finally out. I, for one, am wondering if we'll see this McDonald's tie-in again, with Episode 4 being released. It reminds me of when Episode 4 from Season 1 was released. In that episode, there was this post credit scene. We wondered how it was all going to end. The biggest question was, who could we trust? What if I told you that the answer to this question was sewn into the show from the very beginning? What if I told you that spoilers for the ending were woven into the fabric of the show since the very beginning? Literally threaded through each episode. I'm out of sewing puns, so that's right. The costuming in Loki Season 1 told us who we could trust, therefore spoiling the ending. See, I saw this post about Loki's costumes in the MCU movies. His costumes are often asymmetrical, which symbolizes his untrustworthiness and his role as the god of mischief. If we apply this paradigm to Loki Season 1, it predicts with startling accuracy which characters will be trustworthy or untrustworthy. And the wildest part? From reading interviews with the people who worked on Loki's designs across the MCU, I can't tell how much of this was intended or not. So let's take a look at how Loki's previous appearances in the MCU set the precedent for asymmetrical design, and how asymmetrical and symmetrical costumes in Loki Season 1 predict the character's actions, especially in the last two episodes. I'm curious, who's your favorite character in the Loki series? To quote Hilary Duff, let's go back, back to the beginning. The first Thor movie finds Loki vying for the throne through duplicity. He has two costumes with asymmetrical designs that reflect his actions. He has the silver plating on one side, and it looks like these fabric folds are off to the side. Here, the lapel is longer on this side. In Avengers, Loki wears this visually confusing costume, and he is at his most unhinged. Sometimes he has one shoulder plate. There are these very strange lapels. He still has silver plating only on one side. Loki's guile surrounds obtaining the Tesseract. We'll talk more about that later. At the start of Thor The Dark World, Loki wears this simpler outfit. One sleeve has this twisting pattern. He's still not trustworthy. Loki wears his same Avengers armor later. There are moments in this film where Loki is trustworthy, yet he's still wearing his asymmetrical armor. So why? Well, at the end of the film, he's secretly taken over the throne. So Thor returns in Thor Ragnarok and discovers this. On Sakaar, Loki wears this blue outfit. And here we get a mention about asymmetry in a Loki costume from someone who worked on Loki's design. Anthony Francisco, visual developer, said that the asymmetry and diagonal lines reflect what Loki is feeling inside. He also said that these things represent that we don't know which side he's leaning on. He switches to this green outfit. He's not trying to trick Thor anymore, but the outfit is still asymmetrical because he takes a tesseract here too. We have these two through lines where Loki's untrustworthiness involves the tesseract, and both are reinforced through asymmetrical costuming. This one concludes with a failed attack on Thanos. The other, though, concludes with his run-in with the TVA. Now, this would be a nice segue into talking about Loki Season 1, but I have some notes. Loki does have some symmetrical outfits in the MCU movies, with their own symbolism. Other trustworthy characters sometimes have asymmetrical outfits, and asymmetry in costume design can symbolize other things. However, in a show completely about Loki, the concept of asymmetrical clothing representing untrustworthiness gets ramped up. Untrustworthiness can be a matter of perspective depending on the story and protagonist. So our framework here is, as Loki becomes trustworthy, who ultimately helps or hinders him? Symmetrical costumes indicate which characters will help 
and asymmetrical costumes indicate which ones will hinder. Loki quickly loses his Avengers armor. Costume designer Christine Wada said that with the armor removed, it becomes about an internal journey instead of being about the armor. With this patch on his jacket, he still has some asymmetry. Wada said that Loki loses the jacket so we could see some battle wounds. However, shortly after losing the jacket with the asymmetrical patch, he shows the first signs of trustworthiness. He spends the rest of the show in an aggressively symmetrical outfit. This coincides with him making real friendships and leaving behind his deceptive ways. At the end of the show, he acknowledges his past deceit and doesn't buy for power. Wada said that Loki and Mobius have clothes made from shark skin. It's a vintage fabric that has two tones, brown and green. She said that the green suits Loki. And if the green suits Loki, the brown suits Mobius. Literally, because he's wearing a suit made from it. And figuratively, too. Wada said that the brown is meant to portray a more benign organization. This also serves as a way to connect Loki and Mobius. Mobius' suit is symmetrical. While justifiably mistrusting Loki, he eventually sees that Loki is telling the truth, and he decides to help him. When we first meet Ravona, she has this sash that makes her ensemble asymmetrical. Later, we see this flare on her jacket. Wada said that the flare was included so Ravona wouldn't lose all femininity. She said that it also shows that she could be powerful as a female with the female flourish. Whether intended to or not, this gives Ravona's costume a major asymmetrical element that aligns with her actions. After Ravona pruned Loki, he meets these four variants. Boastful Loki has these diagonal panels, but one is going in the opposite direction. He ends up betraying the other three. President Loki and the other variants are also untrustworthy, as seen by their betrayals. President Loki's asymmetry is seen with this large tear and tuft on his shoulder, and with the button. While it's hard to get a clear look at the other variants' outfits, it appears that there are asymmetrical elements for over half of them. Kid Loki, Classic Loki, and Alligator Loki, though, don't betray anyone. Kid Loki and Classic Loki's costumes are completely symmetrical. They have lines indicating that they have moved on from the negative Loki character traits. Loki refers to these three as his friends, and they help Loki, even when it's dangerous. Sylvie and Loki meet He Who Remains. He talks about his variants and says he's ready to retire, so they have two options. Defeat him and let the sacred timeline start branching, or take over the throne. Loki and Sylvie aren't sure if he's telling the truth, but like everyone else in the show, the costume lets us know. In the assembled episode about Loki, we learn that He Who Remains costume has pieces from different eras. From what we can see, the costume is symmetrical. And so, when Sylvie defeats him, we see that he was telling the truth. I've saved the best for last. Let's take a look at Sylvie's character arc and how it's reflected in her costuming. At first, Sylvie is shrouded in a cloak. Wada said that this was meant as a bit of a misdirect towards her potentially being a man. When we see her face, she's wearing a crown with a missing horn. It's an obvious asymmetrical element implying that she can't be trusted. She loses the crown. Later, she and Loki say they trust each other. After that, she loses her cloak, like Loki did earlier. In the void, Sylvie asks Loki if she can trust him not to betray her. Notice that Loki doesn't ask if he can trust her, and Sylvie doesn't say she won't betray him. As Sylvie tries to defeat he who remains, Loki tries to stop her. Perhaps he has convinced her to take a moment and consider their options. But Sylvie still has one obvious asymmetrical element to her costume. On one side, there is this gold plating. This is reminiscent of one of Loki's earlier costumes. It was there all along. She couldn't be trusted. She pushes him through a time door. 
She said from the very beginning that her goal was to take down the TVA. So she wasn't lying. But she does trick him. So that covers all the characters. Almost. Miss Minutes doesn't follow this framework. B-15 might not follow it either. And the tear on Loki's shirt could just as well be an asymmetrical element like the tear on President Loki's jacket. The theory isn't perfect. But I've got some ideas about how B-15 does align with this asymmetrical slash symmetrical theory, especially into Season 2. Will the asymmetrical paradigm hold up in Season 2? We'll have to wait a couple weeks and see. Do you want a costume breakdown for Season 2? Drop a comment down below. If you liked this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.